You can leave here full or you can leave here empty. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight and we thank you, God, for another opportunity, Lord, just to enter into your presence. And God, help us, Lord, as we enter into worship. God, help us to purpose in our hearts. God, we're going to get all that you have for us. God, I pray for your freedom and your liberty, God, as we enter into worship. God, let your spirit reign in this house. And Father, I pray, God, that you just move in the hearts and lives of each and every one that's come out tonight. And God, we ask it all tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord tonight. And welcome back into the house of the Lord, and trust you've had a good day. I know we had good word this morning, looking yeah. forward to the testimony tonight. Sister Leah is going to lead us in this opening song, You Are Worthy of It All. You 
deserve the glory. Sing that again. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all. Lord, you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. worship you, God. You, You're worthy, Lord. Amen. You're worthy, Lord. Amen. We magnify you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 Brother Jason, can we do that bridge? Day we do the bridge. And night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. So Night and day, let incense arise. 
Habits of praise, church. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And the angels up Hallelujah. in heaven are singing this, not that same song, but they're singing how worthy he is. Yes. I think the word says 10,000 times 10,000s mm. and thousands and thousands, and thousands. And that's an awful lot of angels. Yes, it is. Mm. My, my, my. All singing praises. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. And how Thank holy you, he is. Nate let's, Amen. Nate, let's go to God. God still moves. Mm -hmm. God still moves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. God still moves. God still moves. In the hearts of his people, God still moves. He does. Does not sleep, nor does he slumber. God still moves. God still moves. Sing that again, church. God still moves. Oh, God still moves in the hearts of his people. God. And he does not sleep, nor does he slumber. God still moves, oh God still moves. Can't you just feel the Spirit moving in oh, yes, this can. place? Yeah. Can't you just see the love of Jesus on each face? We can be sure that when we praise the King of Kings, we can see our God at work doing great and mighty things. And God still moves. God still moves. In the hearts of His people, God still moves. He does not sleep, nor does He slumber. God still moves, my God still moves. Now many will say that God no longer has control oh, yes. 
And many will say that he can't move the human soul. But I've seen a change in one who's met him face to face. And I've seen him in the one who's been saved by his grace. Oh, God still moves. My God still moves in the hearts of His people. God still moves. He does not sleep, nor does He slumber. God still moves. My God still moves. Oh, God still moves. Yes, God still moves in the hearts of His people. God still moves. He does not sleep, nor does He slumber. God still my God still moves, He does not sleep, nor does He slumber, God still moves, God still moves. Amen, aren't you glad tonight God's not dead, He's still alive and He's still able to do what you need Him to do tonight. God can still move on your behalf. The Bible says we have faith just as a grain of a mustard seed. He'd move a mighty mountain. If you're standing at the foot of a mountain tonight, just have a little bit of faith and let God do the miraculous. Amen. If you got a need tonight, slip it up to Him. He's your answer. I'm not your answer. God's your answer. We're going to join our faith together, and we're going to believe God to meet your need tonight. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight. God, you're not dead. You're not asleep, but God, you're alive, and you're well, and you still hold all power and authority. There's not a hand that was raised in this building. God, that you're not able to move in their behalf. And Father, we just raise our hands tonight, recognizing, God, that we need you, because in ourselves... We are limited, but we know tonight you have no limits. You have no boundaries. You are all-powerful, yeah. almighty God, and you can speak a word, and our lives can be changed. Situations can be brought to existence. Lord, healings can be brought forth just being in your presence. And, God, I pray for every hand that was raised in this building. God, that you would visit them, move in their behalf, make a way, God, where there seems to be no way. We believe believe tonight you're still a way maker, you're still a miracle worker, and there's yeah, still nothing too big or too hard for you. Yeah. We believe tonight all things are possible with you. And Father, we ask it all tonight in faith, believing that God, you still move. And Father, we pray it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, by faith, amen. amen. It is done in the name of Jesus. Brother Nate. Yeah, hallelujah, hey, hallelujah. Jason Kia G, we're going to change it up a little bit. I just feel like we need to sing this song tonight. How many is thankful there's still power in the blood of Jesus? Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, would you be free from, from your burden of, of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or evil the victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, oh, power in the blood. Wounds or a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. In the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the 
precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, would you be whiter, much whiter than snow. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. In the blood. For Jesus, your King, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you lift daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. How many knows there's still power in the blood of Jesus to take a heart that is black and full of sin and to wash it his red blood and make it white as snow? Amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight. I'm going to ask Brother Jay to come and let's give him a hand clap, him and the Lord and what God's done in his life. Looking forward to hearing what God has done. Amen. I may not be as eloquent and polished as our pastor is tonight, but it's been some time, and I just thank the Lord. And four months ago, six months ago, I would have never dreamt this was possible. I could not see it ever standing in God's house. Amen. Giving Him praise and glory. I know many of you know me from when I was a child, and some of you know me as an adult, and some of you just met me. And so tonight I'm, amen, pastor say, well, can you do 30 minutes? And so I've kind of taken some cleft notes, and I condensed it to six pages. So I think I can get it in 30 minutes. Amen. But I do want to share just kind of a background, amen, of how I've started out in church and God and my journey with Him and share my testimony. And I know a lot of people when I've ran into them through the years have wondered where I was and what I was doing in. Amen. Ashamed, I never really shared a lot. And, but it's time that I give God praise for what He's done. I can look back tonight and I can raise my hand. Amen. And I can say, thank you, Jesus. And, Amen, because my destination has changed. Amen, I'm back on that straight and narrow. And I praise the Lord for that tonight. And Amen, just a few months ago after I gave my heart to the Lord, I was speaking with one of my daughters, my middle child, Olivia. Amen, and we were talking about the Lord. And I told her, you know, baby girl, I'm back in church now. And I was sharing some things with her, trying to encourage her. And she's like, well, Dad, are you going back? And... Are you going to be able to speak in church again? I said, well, I said, the Lord knows, and I am called to preach, so whatever capacity He would have me, I will be willing, and amen. And I know she's watching tonight, and I thank thank the Lord for my children, and that they can see me where I am today and where I was. 
Amen. And start with a quick background. I was saved at the age of 14 on 11th and Elizabeth in this church family. Amen. Under the pastoral ship of Reverend Leroy Hill. Started preaching when I was 15 years old. And amen. I was brought up in the youth group and the youth service. As last week, Brother Black made mention, him and Sister Stephanie were my, my youth leaders for a time. And Amen. I remember many nights spending the night with them. I remember prayer meetings we had at their little living room on Joseph Street. Amen. I remember one service where it was kind of warm out and we had the windows up and we had the tambourines going and we were singing and shouting in that little living room and we hear a knock at the back door. Amen. Brother Black went back to see who it was and it was two officers and Amen. We kind of got a little loud, and the neighbors called the police, and they came in to see what was going on. And Amen. I remember Sam Westmoreland was slain in the spirit, half on the couch, half on the floor. You could hear people speaking in tongues, and, and, he, and we, we, we began to tell them, well, we're just having church. We're just praising our Lord. Amen. This is normal for us. And, Amen. And that officer said, well, I guess there's no law against that, but you're going to have to keep it down. If we come out again, you're going to have to disband. And, and as they were walking out, and I remember stopping the officers, and uh, I said, hey, officer, can we have a word of prayer for you? One of the police officers turned around and said, well, you can keep your spirits to yourself. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I thank God for my heritage. I thank God for the upbringing. Amen. The good times that God allowed us to have and learn. But uh, at the age of 14, I got a hunger for God. Amen. And I began to seek after the Lord. And there's a lot of things in church that I love. Uh, I love singing the songs of God. I love hearing the preaching. I, I, I love shouting. And Amen. I used to run these aisles. And Amen. And if the Lord ever gets a hold of me, I'll run them again, Brother Black. And Amen. But the, the one thing that I've always clung to and held on to and loved more than any part of church was His Word. Amen. Growing up, I was like a sponge. I just couldn't get enough of the Word of God. Every Bible conference, every church service, every function I, I tried to be at because I was so hungry as a young Christian for the Word of God. And Amen. It wasn't long after I was saved that God called me to preach. And at 15, I remember preaching my first sermon. Amen. And I'll never forget it because afterwards I went home and I realized I had two great big bruises on the side of my knees. They shook so hard that I actually bruised the side of my knees. <laughs> Amen. And it didn't help that Pastor Hill asked me to come, uh, come with some notes. And I wrote them out and I gave them to him the week before. And he never gave them back to me until right before I went to preach. <laughs> Amen. And, but I thank God for, for all, all the lessons that He's given me and all the blessings. And, and at 17 years old, I moved away from home, still in high school, became a youth pastor of a church in North Judson, Indiana. Amen. Uh, uh, then a, y a couple years later, I moved up north to Black Oak, Indiana, where I also served as a, as a youth minister. At the age of 21, I married my church sweetheart, uh, uh, Lori Smoot. We had dated for about three years, met in church and went to church camp together and and then we took our first work as pastors when I was 23 in Rockville, Indiana. At the age of 25 I was elected as a state youth director for Indiana and after my first term I was then voted in as senior pastor of Hammond Pentecostal Church of God where for the next year I served as pastor and full-time state youth director, and after my first term, I stepped down and devoted myself full-time to the church and where I was for approximately four years pastoring, amen, and this is where things began to take a turn in my life, and God had been good up to that point, and He has never stopped being good, but I had never experienced 
a, a storm that I ex experienced four years after pastoring. You see, me, me and my wife, we started having some problems. And, and I'll never forget it. She told me she was leaving. And so, first thing I did, I called my bishop, Reverend Branham. And he came up and he met with her and I. And we began to be counseled. And, and afterwards, we went home. And I'll never forget, she told me. She said, well, I'm giving us one year. And if things don't turn around, if things don't change, I'm leaving. Amen. I heard her, but I didn't listen to her. Because in my heart, it wasn't feasible. It wasn't possible. I would not allow that kind of thinking. You're a Christian. You stay married. You, in the good times, the bad times, for better, for worse, that's what I believed. It wasn't possible for me to go through a divorce. And, and so I never thought about it that whole year. It was as if it never happened. And after a year, almost to the day, the week, and uh, I came home and I was serving as full-time pastor. I worked a full-time job and I was going to college full-time. And I uh, came home and my wife wasn't there. She was always home when I got home and the kids were always there. And so I called her mother who babysat for us while she worked and I was in school. And she said, yes, Lori's here. You want to talk to her? She gets, puts her on the phone, and she says, I'm not coming back, Jay. And it broke my heart. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to do. I quickly jumped in the car, went over to her parents' house, and tried to talk some sense, tried to uh, fix it. But I wasn't able to fix it. I went home that night, and I'll never forget it. As if it was last night, I went into the parsonage in the living room, and in the middle of my living room, I just sank on the floor, and I lay down in a fetal position. I grabbed my knees, and I began to cry out to God. I said, Lord, I don't understand. Amen. I don't understand why i got to go through this. I've done everything you've asked me to do. Amen. I, I, I preached in front of thousands of people. I've preached in other countries. I've been on the radio. I've been written in newspapers. I've done all that you have asked. Why has this happened? And I just feel like I've lost everything. I've had churches from California, Arkansas, Colorado, Oklahoma call me wanting me to come and work with their church. And Amen. I said, God, this isn't fair. I feel like... Everything I've ever worked for is gone. I've lost to God. My children, my wife, my marriage, my ministry, my home, everything in an instant I felt was gone. And I'll never forget God speaking to me. He says, you haven't lost everything. You still have me and I'll be your everything. Yeah. Amen. That's one thing I've never forgotten. I wish I would have grabbed a hold of it. But I look back now and I can see how through the years, through my failures, God was everything. He never left me. He never forsook me. But He was a friend that stood closer than a brother. He never stopped talking to me. He never stopped knocking on my heart's door. He never gave up on me when I gave up on Him. When I turned my back to Him and I began to walk away, God was always there. God was always faithful. And I thank God that when we're not faithful, His faithfulness never fails. God never fails. Amen. And so that was a trying time, and I didn't know what I was going to do. And so I called my childhood pastor, Reverend Hill, and I went down and I visited him, and I talked, and he ministered to me and counseled me, and then I got, called my bishop, and I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. He says, well, I'll be up and we'll figure this out. Amen. I told Reverend Branham, I said, I don't want this to stain or be a stain on the church, I don't want it to affect or make it look bad that I've got to go through a divorce. and We don't believe in divorce, so I don't know. Should I stay? Should I leave? Amen. Everything was just confusing to me at that time in my life. And he gave me a month off. He said, don't worry about the church. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to meet with them. We're going to talk, and I'll get back with you. 
The following week, he met with me and he said, Well, I met with the church. I told them what was going on. Amen. And we took a vote. And we voted if they wanted you to stay or if they wanted me to find another pastor in. Amen. And he goes, I'm here to tell you they wanted 100% came back. They didn't want you to leave. Amen. And it blessed my heart, but it was a mistake. At the time, I didn't know I was making. I stayed with the church when I needed healing. Sometimes we have to learn to step back and, and let God minister to us. And, amen. I was hurting. I was bleeding. Amen. I was tore up. I didn't know what to do. And I had to be the one that people looked to. I had to be the one that ministered out. And, and week after week I went to that church. And, amen. And I could hear the music playing. And you see my wife before she left. Amen. She played the piano. She led in worship. And, and I was standing on that pulpit and I would look over there and she wasn't there. Amen. I would look out the congregation what I would, amen, my, my my two oldest children would be, and they weren't there no more. Amen. It was a constant reminder, amen, of, of, of what I felt I lost and, and, and what I was going through. And, amen. And as the weeks progressed, about seven months, I stayed. And, amen. I, I just couldn't do it, and I failed to sin. Amen. I failed to sin. Amen. While I was pastoring, I met a young lady. Amen. And uh, I wasn't strong enough to walk away anymore. I never got that healing that I needed. Amen. I continued to bleed. I began to continue to get weaker and weaker, not realizing this. Amen. But knowing I was hurting. And, and before I knew it, it was too late. And so I ended up calling Reverend Branham and meeting with him, hearing with him what was going on and resigned the church and let my credentials go, and amen. And I moved back home to Lafayette to try to start again, try to pick up the pieces to find myself, and amen. And as I went back, uh, amen, I, I, I began to spiral even more out of control. I began, you see, I never was addicted to a lot of things, I wasn't addicted to drugs, and amen, I wasn't addicted to alcohol. But I became addicted to sin. I mean, it doesn't matter what you are doing. You can become addicted to sin. It's hard to wake, walk away once it's got a hold on you. Amen. It's just like missing church one week. It's not that bad, you think. And the second week, it's easier. And before long, amen, it's hard to go back. Amen. Because sin gets a hold of you and won't let you go. I began drinking for the first time in my life. And amen, here was a man of God full of faith and power at one time that stood and preached to hundreds of people. Now in a bar, drinking. Amen. And not giving a thought about God, trying to forget about God. That's hard to do. He won't let you forget. And I'm so thankful He never let me forget. And amen. Glory to God. And so I begin to just spiral. And uh, after a year after my separation and move back home, I met another young lady. Amen. And knew her less than a month. And we quickly got married and moved in with each other. Within the first couple of months, we had our... She got pregnant with our first child, my, my second wife. And, amen. And I, I, I said to myself, I've got another family now. I've got to get my act together. So I tried my best. Amen. We, I took my family back to church. And every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday. But I was still lost. I was still hurting. I was still miserable. And I did not understand why. Amen. And I began just get more angry and more angry. And after about four years, amen, my, my, my second wife decided she no longer wanted to be married. And, amen. And, and she fell in sin. And amen. Why I can't answer for her, I knew, I know that I wasn't the best husband during that time. 
Amen. Because I was going through things I didn't understand myself. And, amen. Through the years we've reconciled and Amen. We we're raising our two children together and I Amen. Consider her one of my friends tonight and Amen. She even came to my baptism last Sunday and Amen. But during that time, Amen, I feel not only I felt her, I felt my family, and she failed to sin and Amen. And she left the Lord and she had an affair. And amen. And so once again, it feels like my life was being ripped out, taken from me, hurting. Amen. Feeling rejected. Amen. Feeling uh, a lie to. Just all kinds of emotions. I went through this once. Why do I got to go through it again, Lord? I don't know if I can do it. And so I, amen, did what I did the first time. And, amen, I continued back to sin. And this time I not only was confused, amen, and full of shame and full of guilt, now I was starting to get angry towards God. Amen. I said, God, I attempted to make things right. I attempted to do this. Amen. And that's where I made my mistake, and I'll share that in a bit. Amen. Amen. We can't do anything. We can't fix ourselves. Amen. We can try, but we're going to fail. Amen. Only God, amen, can fix what's been broken. Only God, amen, can take the broken halves and make it a whole again. Only God can remove the pain and, amen, the stain of sin from our lives. And only God, amen, can do a new thing in us. But I kept trying to do it myself. I can fix it. I can make things better. Amen. And I tried and I tried. And so I resorted back to drinking resorted back to smoking. I resorted back to a promiscuous lifestyle. Amen. And then about three years after my second divorce, I met another young lady. Knew her less than a month. Got married and moved in together. Amen. This time, the marriage only lasted one year. Amen. Once again, she ended up having an affair, cheating on me and leaving. And then after she left, my life began to just even crumble the more. Amen. There was a lot of uh, traumatic events that took place over the next couple of months after that, and that was in 2014. On October 12th of that year, I had a nervous breakdown. Amen. I remember just not being able to take any more and hopping into my car, driving down Creasy Lane with the devil on my shoulder saying how much easier it would be if I just swerved in the opposite amen, uh, uh, lane. And it would all be over, all the pain, all the hurt, all the shame, all the guilt, all the anger, all the unforgiveness, everything that I was going through and feeling at that moment, amen, I wouldn't have to worry about it no more. And within seconds, I heard cars honking, and I opened my eyes, and I was in the other lane, amen, swerving, amen, into the, 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 the side of the road, and I... Amen. I pulled aside and I called my aunt and told her, I need you to come and get me. I can't move. I was shaking and she met me where I was and got in the car with her and she immediately took me to the emergency room where they admitted me to the psychiatric ward of the hospital where I spent eight days there, amen, getting the help that I needed and, amen, and once I was released, uh, it wasn't a week that passed. On October the 20th, which was my 40th birthday, that week was traumatic. And on October 20th, 2014, I took a whole bottle of amen, sleeping pills and tried just to end it all. 
amen, and tried to commit suicide. And I remember laying on the floor, amen, still not having anything, lost everything from my last marriage, and amen, living with my aunt and uncle. And in the living room, I remember they had called the ambulance, and I couldn't open my eyes. I could barely hear people talking. I could feel them doing a sternum rub on my chest. And, amen. Not able to speak, not able to move. Amen. And scared. I didn't want. I didn't want to. Amen. But I, I just didn't have the strength anymore. I remember them putting me on the gurney and wheeling me out to the ambulance and taking me back to the hospital once again, being put under psychiatric. Uh, amen. Uh, 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 evaluation where I spent another six days in the hospital. And upon my release, my doctor told me, now if there's a third time, if I release you and you end up back here, I'm going to get a court order and you're not going to let go. You're not going to be released. Amen. And I'm thankful there wasn't a third time. Amen. But I went home. Amen. And I began to Try to put the pieces back together again. Amen. And then about uh, March of 2016, I met a young lady and uh, she moved in and it wasn't shortly later that we found out we were expecting a child, which is my youngest son, Noah. Amen. And we had been together for six years and it would have been seven years this month. And this past December, I had found out that for over a month she was sneaking out at night after I'd went to bed and everybody was sleeping and she had met somebody and she'd come back before I got up the next day. And, amen. and when I confronted her, she decided she wanted to leave and walked out on me and my son, December 19, 2022. Amen. here I go again. Hurting, bleeding. I said, I've got to do something different this time, Brother Black. And after a week, I began to listen to God. He gave me a scripture. and He said that we got to lay aside every weight and sin that would easily beset us and run this race with patience. And, and after he gave me that scripture, he said, I want you to call Brother Black. I want you to say, ask if he'll meet with you, and I want you to confess all your sins to him. I said, God, I can't do that. Amen, I, I can't do that. Amen, God says, I want you to call him. And so I did, and I'm so thankful I did. Amen, I didn't even have his number. I messaged Sister, Sister Stephanie and said, how do I get a hold of Brother Chris? I need to call him, I need to talk to him, and... She quickly responded and gave me his number, and I called him. And he said, how about this time? Is this a good time? I said, I'll be there. Amen. I didn't even have a way to the church. We met here at the church and took a bus. Amen. And I even got off the wrong stop. I was so far from the church, and it was raining, and I'm like, well, devils will go back home. I said, no, I'm going to walk. And I walked in the rain until I got here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I made my mind up. I've got to do something different. <laughs> Amen. I've got to quit trying to do it. Yeah. Amen. And that afternoon, Brother Black and I, we sat in his office and I poured my heart out to him. And I said, God finally told me what I need to do because you see, God was always there. Amen. All these 15 years that I've, amen, tried to figure it out myself and had no answers. And you see, God was always wanting to take my guilt and my shame, always wanting to take all that away from me, but I realized I wouldn't let Him. Amen. I was so ashamed that I didn't want to let go of it. Amen. I, I knew what I had done. I was embarrassed. Amen. And, but by confessing that to Brother Black, it enabled me to let go. 
Amen. And once I let go of it, we came here inside the sanctuary where I knelt and I prayed. And I said, God, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Come into my heart. Wash me once again. Amen. With your blood white as the snow. Amen. Cleanse me from all my transgressions and my iniquity. Amen. But you know, there wasn't a clap of thunder. There wasn't no spark of lightning. There wasn't no boisterous voice when I got up. But there was something. For 15 years, I told Brother Black I'd been a prisoner. There's no better word to describe the misery that I lived for 15 years. Amen. To have God there constantly knocking and you refusing to open it. Amen. Trying to turn a deaf ear to God. Trying to turn your back to Him. Amen. For 15 years, He continued to speak to my heart every single day. The Bible says it is better to have never known than to have tasted and known the goodness and greatness of God and walk away. I know what that Scripture means. Amen. I know how good God was. Amen. I tasted of the Lord when I was young. Amen. And then I left and I walked away. And there's been so many times that I've yearned for it once again. But I wouldn't let go of my shame, my guilt. I carried it with me. Amen. As a weight for 15 years. Amen. I got up and I fell to peace. <laughs> oh, there had been small amounts of time during that span that I felt happy. But you see, happiness is only determined upon the circumstance. Amen. You can be happy for a few moments and then it fades away. But when I got up, amen, from that altar, December 30th, 2022, amen, I wasn't just happy. Amen. But He restored unto me the joy of my salvation. Amen. The joy, amen, that passes all understanding. The joy that gave me strength. Amen. I was no longer weak. I was no longer feeble, but I was able to stand. I'm thankful for the joy of the Lord, which is my strength tonight. You see, I had nothing to draw from for 15 years. Amen. I felt joy and peace like I haven't known for some time. Amen. And I thought, I can look back and I haven't been back for very long. But in about the three months that I have, I could stand and I can tell you, miracle after miracle after miracle that God had began, has done, is doing in my life. Amen. Things that I never thought was possible. God said, let me make a way. When you stopped, there was no way. Amen. Let me do it for you. And God has. Amen. I remember going home and saying, God, it's just me and Noah now. For eight years, I never had a driver's license. I lost it. Amen. I'm going to need a driver's license now. Amen. But I was facing over $3,000 and getting it back. And I never had that much. And I didn't know what to do. So I began to get online and look and see if there was any options. And I found where I could petition the court. Amen. For my reinstatement fees to be waived. So I did the paperwork. I printed them out and went down to the courts and met with the clerk and told her what I wanted to do. And she said, well, what's your driver's license number in? Amen. And your full name. And I'll see what I can't do. 
So I gave it to her. and She went to her computer. She pulled up my record, printed it out, came to me, and she said, well, you can do this. This is fine. This will get your license back. But I've got a much easier, quicker way. If you go to the insurance company and just pay the insurance that you're required to have, when your insurance company, amen, sends your policy to the BMV, amen, those reinstatement fees will be erased and your license will immediately become valid. And I thought... Hallelujah. You see, he paid a debt. He didn't owe. I owed a debt. I couldn't pay. Isn't that just like Jesus tonight? Amen. Over 2,000 years ago, he paid my sin debt. A debt. Amen. He didn't owe a debt that I could never pay. That's just like my Lord. Oh, that was just one of the many things God's been doing. Miracles after miracles. And I'm thankful for that. I'm so thankful. I do want to share a verse of Scripture with you. If you return with me to the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter. Amen. I just want my testimony to go along with some of His Word tonight. If you will stand, those who are able and willing, Matthew chapter 7, and we'll begin at verse 24. The Bible reads, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these things of mine and doeth them shall be likened unto, amen, and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Amen. Let us pray real quick. Father God, I'm thankful that I'm able to stand here tonight. A living, breathing testimony of your saving, redeeming power. And Father Lord, I pray for the next few minutes that your word would come alive in our hearts, that you would speak to each and every soul, that you would do a work, God, that needs to be done. Bless us, touch us, anoint your word in the name of Jesus, we pray. And with a great big shout, everyone say amen. 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 Oh, when I was thinking about my testimony, this kept coming back to my mind. You see, this was the answer that I searched for for all those years and all my life. And amen, glory to God. I, after attempting to rebuild my life and it always falling and crumbling, I, I never understood why. Amen. I met a young lady in youth camp, married her, served the Lord, and was a pastor, married, and fell. Met another lady, it failed. Met a third lady, it failed. And each time I had to start over, I'd literally start over. Nothing, lose my home, and lose my children, and didn't understand it. God, how many times? Amen. The fourth time now this last year I had to rebuild and start over. And then God directed me to these Scriptures. And this is why. You see, every time I attempted to start over, rebuild, do good, Amen, I was using the wrong foundation. 
Amen. It doesn't matter what you build the structure out of. You can build your home. Amen. You can build your life out of the strongest material there is in this world. But if the foundation, amen, is wrong, amen, even the strongest of stone houses, amen, will fall and crumble. It is the foundation that holds it sure. It is the foundation Amen. That makes it strong. It is the foundation where the house sits upon. All those times I tried to build the house. Even one time I went to church, but I still used the wrong foundation. Amen. There's two similarities between these two. Amen. One is quite obvious. They are both used for the same purpose. They are both foundations. They both can be used to build upon. But they are night and day from each other. Amen. They are nothing alike. Amen. You build upon the rock. Oh, I'm thankful tonight. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Hallelujah. I thought, amen, for the last 15 years, how afraid the devil had to have been of me. Because he tried and worked so tirelessly to in me. He knew what God could do. He knew what God would do in my life. Amen. If He ever got me back. And so for 15 years He tried. Amen. Everything that He could. Amen. To the point where I even attempted suicide. Amen. The Bible says He comes to steal kill and destroy. Amen. And he tried for 15 years. Why? Because he was afraid. Amen. And when I begin to think about that, oh, I just have one declaration for him tonight. Hallelujah. I have one thing. Amen, devil, if you were afraid of me then, oh, you better tremble now. Amen. If you were afraid of what God could have done then, Watch out. Amen. Because He has set my soul aflame. I will not be turned back. I will not be turned around. Amen. I am J 2.0 tonight. If He was afraid before, He better be trembling now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God has a purpose. I read in a book not too long ago, there's a purpose for the pain. And I thought about that. There's a purpose for the pain. The pain and the agony of the cross. There was a purpose for the pain. Amen. All the pain that I have went through, there's a purpose for the pain tonight. Amen. Glory to God. I'm building upon the rock. And the second similarity between the two foundations. God said, didn't say that it could rain, but when the rain comes. You see, both experience, experiences storms. Amen. When we build upon the rock, doesn't mean we won't go through things anymore. It doesn't mean we won't feel pain anymore. Amen. It doesn't mean that the winds won't blow and the waves won't roar. But it means we are sure. Amen. We are steadfast. We are unmovable in Christ. Amen. Christ that 
solid rock I'll stand. Amen. So let the storms of this life, the storms of this world, let the trials of faith come my way. Amen. I will not be knocked down anymore. Amen. But I'll stand strong on the rock. Those who build their house, I don't care how glamorous it may look, on the wrong foundation of sand. All the time you've invested in your work, all the energy you put into that, you see the house on these foundations is symbolic to our life. We must build our life upon the right foundation. Amen. Fifteen years I wasted building on the wrong foundation. Amen. Those who build their life on the sand, when your storms come and they will come, all your time, all your energy, everything you've invested in your life, can be wiped away. Amen. Those floods are just, amen, cause that life of yours just to crumble. I know. I know. In closing, as they come to the music tonight, let's all stand. Today, all day, I've been pretty nervous. I mean, I may have been a little rusty tonight, and then Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and praise them tonight, church. You see, when I think about what He's done for me, there are times when I have no words. I gave you a very, very condensed version of my testimony. Hopefully a year from now I'll stand and share a greater testimony what God did for me this coming year. Oh, with every head I bowed, every heart. Maybe there's one tonight. Maybe you've been going through your storm. I first want to offer these altars up. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you've been building on the wrong foundation, if you're here tonight, it's not too late. It's not too late to begin building on the right foundation. Amen. If you don't know the Lord is your Savior, you're invited to come to these altars. Hallelujah. You say, Brother Jay, I've got a strong foundation, but I'm going through a storm tonight. I'm going through a trial and having a hard time. These altars are open. Let's all find a place to pray. If you need special prayer, We'll pray with you. Need to be anointed with oil. We'll anoint you. But let us all come and spend some time talking to the Lord. I love you. Hallelujah. Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. 
You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice, tell the same old lie. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you've got pain, He's a pain taker. Oh, if you feel lost, He's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, He's a prison shaking Savior. If you've got chains, He's a chain breaker. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old time. All the things we know just ain't right. a pain taker. Oh, if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive oh, let's it, it. Let's worship if it. you can feel oh. it, somebody testify. You got pain, he's a pain taker. Oh, if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got Chains, he's a chain breaker. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Before I turn it back to Brother Black here in a second, uh, one thing I, I, I want to, amen, share. I, I forgot, but the Lord reminded me. and Amen. Uh, while I was, after my second divorce, I remember my oldest daughter who was here last week, J.C. She was about 11 or 12 years old. And I uh, remember seeing her across the living room and something was bothering her. And took her outside. I said, well, what's wrong? I'll never forget the words she said to me. She said, Dad, you changed. As a father, to hear your little girl say, Dad, you changed. To see that. And notice that in my life, it was painful. And I looked at her and said, well, honey, I'm going through some things right now. And I said, I won't always be like this. It won't be long. Amen. Glory to God. She's 25 now. 
Amen. Sweet girl, 12 years later, I kept my promise. <laughs> Hallelujah. It took me longer. But He got me here. He got me here tonight, and I'm thankful for that. Amen. And I'm thankful for Brother Black. I told him that day, I said, I know I've got a long ways to go, and I know how I am. I said, I'm going to need some accountability. I said, I need you to, if I'm not in church, you get on there, find out why I'm not. Uh, I just told him what I needed. Amen. Your pastors don't always know what you need unless you tell them what you need. Amen. And there's been several weeks. I've gotten a couple messages and texts. Brother Jay, hey, I just wanted to check in on you. And if I don't tell him why I was going, he messages me back. Wait a day or two. Hey, I haven't heard from you yet. And I'm thankful we have a pastor that loves and cares. Let's give him a hand of praise. Amen, Brother Black. I'm looking forward to J2.0. Amen. We got a little taste of it tonight. Amen. But we give all glory and honor to God. Aren't you glad you don't give up on us? Amen. Amen. Brother Jay, will you go stand back there by Brother Kenny when, when you leave tonight? Shake his hand. And let him know you appreciate. Will you go back there? And as we leave, shake his hand and let him know you appreciate him standing and testifying and sharing what God's done. Let's bow our heads to be dismissed tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done. And God, we know if you've done it for Brother Jay, you can do it for anybody else. God, we know tonight, God, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God, you never change. And Father, I pray, God, that you continue to anoint him, that you would continue to use him. And God, let great and mighty things continue to happen in his life. And Father, we'll never fail to give you praise, never fail to give you honor. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. I lean on you, Lord. I lean on you, Lord. For the things that I need, I lean on you. When I don't know just what to do, I've got the faith you're going to see me through. To supply my every need, I lean on you. Oh, I lean on you, Lord. I lean on you, Lord. For the things that I need, I lean on you. When I don't know just what to do, I've got the faith you're going to see me through. To supply every need, I lean on you. When I don't know just what to do, I've got the faith you're going to see me through To supply my every need I lean on you